Zuma Foundation asking for public donations to cover the ever-increasing legal fees uh, of former President Jacob Zuma. The foundation published the plea in a tweet today. For more on this, we're joined now by the spokesperson of the Jacob Zuma Foundation, um, Zwanele Mani. A humble plea for uh, legal fees support, if I'm correct. I heard you earlier on saying uh, former President Jacob Zuma is swimming in debt because he has taken a combi load of uh, senior SCs and junior SCs in uh, these legal battles that he is uh, facing. One would say, well, the president is exercising his democratic right to defend himself in, in, in our courts. Uh, could he have anticipated that uh, these uh, fees would certainly tally and mount up to this level? Uh, most definitely not. Primarily because some of these uh, fees are historical fees. Uh, one would have thought that uh, if you were a head of state and you were being taken to court on the basis of your conduct as the head of state, that that would have been a, a, an issue of a, a where work should deal with that kind of a situation. But as it turns out, uh, the current uh, administration uh, is refusing to uh, shoulder the bill uh, for expenses incurred uh, while the president was president of the country. So you've got that as the part A of the bill. Part B of the bill are the current and, and ongoing bills. Uh, as you know, that uh, we've got the Peter Marisbeck case on the arms bill and also have the Concord case on the rescission application uh, and all that. So indeed, uh, the, the President Zuma's limited resources as in his salary that he gets from government as a, a former head of state is not, is not enough to cover all of this. And I, and I say to people, even if you are CEO of a listed entity, uh, <clears throat> the kinds of bills that uh, President Zuma is facing, uh, no human being, uh, uh, unless you are super billionaire, uh, that can deal with this thing. But uh, ordinary people, uh, and even mid, uh, high class, not even middle class, high class people are never going to be able to uh, deal with those kinds of bills. So President Zuma is appealing to everyone to assist him uh, in these bills. Now talk to me about uh, the fact that, um, uh, of course, uh, you are attempting this crowdfunding approach. Uh, normally when uh, crowdfundings of this nature are attempted, um, a, a, a quantum is given to say, here's how much we're trying to raise. How much exactly in legal fees are you trying to raise here? Look, I think clearly with the current uh, cases that are ongoing, uh, we don't know the end point uh, of that. Uh, and the current bills that uh, uh, the state is claiming from President Zuma, some of them, the lawyers are still dealing with them just to see if the calculations are correct. Uh, perhaps some of them have prescribed or whatever you. So the lawyers are still dealing with that. So we don't have the actual number, but we know uh, that uh, the number will be high in any event. So I don't have a finite number yet, but we want to appeal to South Africans and the world at large and assure them uh, that the money that uh, we are asking for for President Zuma will be strictly used for the purpose that is being asked for. It's not going to be used for anything else. It's going to be for this. There will be very clear transparency uh, on this thing. We'll uh, also make sure that there is a clear auditing uh, of this thing. So it will be properly uh, accounted for. So we want to say to people that uh, if you put money in that account, uh, it's not going to buy some Mercedes Benz or somewhere. It's really going to be used. Uh, for the legal fees and uh, legal related matters. Yeah. We've seen uh, previously uh, uh, even uh, pension funds of certain uh, uh, officials being attached in order to recoup some of the, the legal costs. Is there concern from the Jacob Zuma Foundation possibly that uh, the pension fund of former President Zuma could be attached uh, to recoup some of these funds? I think in cases where pension funds are, are affected, it's cases where uh, people that are accused, maybe there's uh, an, an adverse findings on those people or likely adverse findings on those people, uh, as it were. Uh, but in, as far as uh, President Zuma's case is concerned, we are very clear uh, that uh, he's, he's innocent of all these things that uh, he's being uh, accused of. So there's absolutely no reason for his pension fund to, uh, to be affected by this. Uh, and we want to call on South Africans to respect the constitution of this country 
and accept it and adopt it and internalize it. When the Constitution says uh, that people must be presumed innocent until proven guilty, President Zuma must be, uh, is part of the constitutional beneficiary of this country. He must also be presumed innocent until proven guilty. So indeed, we must not go with a, a posture that says he's under a cloud, under no cloud. He's under allegations, but some of these allegations, some of them are just political machinations, uh, as it were. So let's, 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 let's give him a benefit of the doubt and understand that he is innocent until proven guilty. Right. The last time President Zuma was found guilty by a court of law uh, was uh, in uh, 1963 uh, for anything that is heavy, except this uh, thing that we have now with this. Uh, uh, yeah, well, one would, would say he was found guilty for contempt of court uh, this time around. But of course, you are you are arguing that and you are challenging uh, the uh, jail sentence itself. Le I know you're quite an active uh, uh, individual on social media and you like to engage folks uh, on social media sure. when they come up with questions. So let's take some of them uh, direct now that have come through. This one on WhatsApp saying, Tabang in the Val. Good evening, Tabo. South Africa has the highest unemployment rate in the world. I'd like to find out from Mr. Mani as to why they want poor South Africans to fund a man who is still getting a pension from the state and has multi-million rent compound in Ghana. Yeah, look, we are asking for people that are willing and able to contribute. Uh, that call that uh, has been made by the foundation has not been directed to poor people. Uh, as it is directed to everyone that is able to, to assist. And we, we know that President Zuma also has got a very strong support in the villages. So I'm saying to the villagers out there that even if you have a goat to donate, go, donate a goat. If you've got a sheep, donate a sheep. If you've got a cow, donate a cow. Whatever it is that you want to donate uh, from the goodness of your heart will be welcome. There's no minimum amount that uh, is requested. Anything that you can put in is welcome. President Zuma is a humble man. Uh, he will accept anything, and uh, we hope that this is going to be a successful project. All right, here's another one uh, coming through on WhatsApp as well uh, from Given in Durbanville. Evening, Tabo and Mr. Manu. Most people, when they are experiencing a financial pickle, they downsize and sell most of their assets. Why is Mr. Zuma not doing that? No, look, if you look at the sizes of the bills that uh, President Zuma has uh, and the sizes of his assets, they are, I mean, in the public domain, I think there's a lot of inflation about the worth of uh, the things that President Zuma has. Uh, but if you were to look at it uh, thoroughly, you will see that uh, uh, there's not much. I mean, the place that he's living at, as a starting point, he's living in a trust land, he's living in a in Gonyama Trust, that land does not belong to individuals. It belongs, it, 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 it doesn't have a title deed of that land. So even if you wanted to go and seize that thing, uh, you can't do that because it doesn't have a title deed of that thing because it's, uh, it, 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 he has a permission to occupy, uh, as it were, because it's a land of the trust. That's how these things work. So people are just misled as if he's got this huge place of his own. No. It's, got, it's not a place of its own. It's got a permission to occupy in that place. If you're going to look at even the, uh, the property that is in that place, these big evaluations that were made, these calculations that were done at the time, were really very inflated. Yeah. The real things that are there are really not worth... Uh, uh, I mean, if you have to go there, there's not $250 million on the ground uh, that you'll find there. I don't know the people that were doing those numbers where they get that. So a wrong impression has been created, including the impression that they were still dealing with uh, by Sunday Times, that Sunday Times said President Zuma owns a mansion in Dubai, and were dealing with that matter very seriously, were taking legal steps against Sunday Times, because yeah. that kind of publication has caused a lot of harm to President Zuma. People say, uh, if you've got a, a, a mansion in Dubai, why do you want money from us? A legitimate uh, reason, right. uh, a, a legitimate concern. Right. And the truth of the matter is that Sunday Times lied. Uh, there is nothing like that, and we've been asking them to produce a title deed of President Zuma of that house in Dubai. Up to today, they have not done so. So I think South Africa must know that so, they were going to be dealing uh, very, very, very decisively with Sunday Times on those uh, falsehoods that they published. Because now, 
Because that speaking president of Dubai, Dubai, is, speaking is, speaking of Dubai Mr. Manu, before we, we, we run out of time, I see you've yeah. made the call to South Africans and everywhere else. Yeah. Uh, now, yeah. uh, we, we know uh, former President Jacob Zuma has been very vocal about his friendships uh, with uh, the, the Gupta family. Uh, have you made that appeal to them? They are known to be billionaires, I suppose, and have uh, lots of money uh, to assist with his legal fees. As things stand, we have not approached any individual uh, as things stand right now. <clears throat> what we've done is we've just done what we've done on that Twitter, and uh, we've uh, thrown the net, uh, the net wide, and we're hoping the people of the world uh, will come to the party uh, because they can see that President Zuma he is one persecuted person in this country. He is the one person that has been uh, incarcerated without a trial. The only person in the world whose rights of uh, appeal have been waived, whose rights of mitigating sentences has been denied, is really uh, getting the raw end of the democracy that we have. So indeed, we think that uh, people will see that uh, President Zuma is a persecuted person uh, and it deserves all the support uh, that uh, we can give him. All right. Let's take the final one from Lekhas Patla Molo on Twitter, uh, saying, uh, can uh, please, Mr. Mani, uh, uh, let us know if, uh, uh, as the Zuma Foundation, uh, have you asked Duzane Zuma to help his father with funds because he's alleged to be uh, in the billions? Well, I'm going to repeat what I just said, that we just cast a net white to everyone. We have not approached any particular individual. I can confirm that we didn't approach Zane personally, uh, or anybody for that matter. We've just put what you put out there to Zane if he says that he will sit on that thing, and uh, if, he, if, if he has a reason to contact us to say this is the, what he wants to do, he will do it like everybody else. We have not approached any particular family or anybody uh, in their individual capacities. We've just done a public appeal, and we hope that all those that will uh, want to assist will come through that route. Mr. Manu, finally, I mean, a quick one as we go out, a quick 20 seconds. How's the health of uh, the former president? Let me clarify something very quickly. Thanks for asking that question. There's been some big hula baloo about the uh, doctors of the president having missed the deadline of the 20th of August. Let me just explain very briefly that uh, there's been a, a chronology of events. On the 10th of of August, when the, when, when, when the court was in session, a commitment was made by lawyers of His Excellency President Zuma uh, to say that uh, the medical report will be ready by the 20th of August. And they, uh, they, they made that commitment in good faith uh, and all of that. And it then so happened that on the 15th of August, then we got a letter, a statement, by the way, uh, from the correctional services indicating that the previous day on the 14th of August, that President Zuma had to go through some procedure of sorts uh, and all of that. Now, as a result of that procedure, the deadline was then uh, kicked out of, uh, out of the rail because now they had this procedure that they had done. So all of that now has been uh, sort of covered, and all the doctors have said is that uh, they just need a couple of more days to make up for the procedure that was not foreseen when they made the undertaking on the 10th. But outside that, President Zuma is, uh, is, is coping with the situation. He's uh, not fighting for his life, so to speak. Uh, he's, he's fine, uh, as it were. And uh, uh, we hope that uh, by the 9th of September, uh, he'll be ready for the trial because he's got quite a few things to, to deal with in that trial, uh, as we have already started with the letters that have gone out uh, to various people, because President Zuma wants the truth to be told about this uh, this arms deal thing. He wants all those that have benefited to be to be open with South Africa and accept that they benefited uh, 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 from this arms deal. And and maybe there's no corruption. Maybe there's corruption. Whatever it is, the court must decide. But President Zuma wants South Africa to know the truth. So he can't wait to go there on the 9th of September uh, and deal with the matters uh, decisively. I appreciate your time and thank you very much for joining us tonight. The spokesperson of the Jacob Zuma Foundation, Mzwanele Manu.